I hope you're doing well today, um, this evening, or morning, or whenever you're watching this. Um, this sermon is called False Updates Part 2. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time we have together tonight. I thank you for what you're about to do in each heart. And I thank you for just being who you are, the great God that we serve and we love and we trust. Father, permeate the atmosphere right now. Clear out all the clutter from our minds so we can hear what you have to say. Father, because we know it's you speak. It's not me or any of, anyone else. It's you. Speak to me. Speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, the other day, I think it was Sunday, I was telling you about the problems I was having with my computer. It's fixed now, but I want to tell you about the journey um, of it getting fixed. It was kind of a trial. Um, if you want to know what happened to it, just go back a video. Um, I talk all about it, so I'm going to tell you the, uh, the end of the story now. The other video has the beginning. So, after yesterday, my computer was down. My, let me back up. My computer was down for a few days, as I said in the last video. Okay, so I called the person that gave me the computer, and I told him what was going on. He said, well, I can't fix it, but there is um, someone, there is a disability helpline at Microsoft. So it just goes to show you, you don't know what you need until you need it. Like, I didn't know there was a disability helpline. I didn't know what was coming. And sometimes you think you're in trouble. You think it's just so awful. But you don't know what, what, um, what help God has in store or what tools God has in store. You don't know what resources are coming so just trust the Lord and he'll guide you so anyway I called this um, this um, I called the Microsoft helpline um, for people with disabilities and what it is is basically not 24 hours, but they have pretty good hours um, where people, it's a, lot, it's a line specially designed for people with disabilities. And I called uh, the line and, and they, were, they were very nice. But the issue I was having was in order for them to uh, take over my computer and really do what they need to do, because what's great about this helpline is um, you, you press a few keys and then they take over with your permission. Um, you press a few keys, type in the code, and then they do all the work. Um, I'm saying all, all of that to say sometimes we work so hard and God just wants us not only to let go but to let him take over 
because a lot of people are struggling because they are afraid to let go. But could you imagine if those people wanted to help me with the thing with my computer? And I said, no, I don't think so. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. It wouldn't get that I'd still be looking, um, I'd still be looking at a small screen and unable to do anything. So, it was because if I didn't let them take over, it, it wouldn't get done because what the first gentleman said at the place that I called first, that he said, Mike, Microsoft would know exactly how to help you because they designed the program. So could you imagine if I called Microsoft and I said, I'm having an issue with my computer. And they, they said, oh, I'll, they said, we can take over your computer and fix it for you. And I said, um, nope. No, it's my computer. I'm not letting anyone take over. Because I think that's what we as humans do with God. Like, he wants to take full control of our churches and our lives. And we're like, nope. Nope, he wants to help us, guide us. And sometimes uh, take us through process. Sometimes do things for us. And we're holding onto things so tight and God is saying right now to somebody watching me he's saying I can't do anything unless you let go I can't do anything unless you let go he said it's okay to let go because I designed the product because the reason that Microsoft knew what to do and the other gentleman didn't, is because Microsoft designed my computer. They know how it works. They know the ins and outs. They know how to program it. They know how to um, deal with unwanted updates. So, so I let, I let the, I let, they gave me a code. I clicked allow because sometimes when you even give God control, you, you need to you you need to allow Him to do it. Because sometimes what we do, we say, "Lord, um, I give you control," but then we take it back. We don't hit the allow button to confirm that yes. We do allow you to take control of our lives, and we still have the reins. Um, because although I typed in the code, if I didn't click allow, it still wouldn't work. Because they're just confirming that I'm allowing them to take over my computer and fix the problem. So, they fixed the pro problem, and how they did it was so interesting. How they did it is, they had to turn off um, the magnifier program, because um, the lady that I spoke to said, I said, it's off already. She said, yes, but... Um, there are things running in the background. Some, sometimes we think things are gone, but they're they're not gone. They're just running in the background, and that background could be could be totally messing us up. So I would say to you right now. What is running in the background of your life that you're trying to keep dead and buried, but it still keeps popping up? Because it's, it's still running in your background, and it's still stopping you from doing what God has called you to do, or a tape that somebody said to you when you were seven. You, 
you you said it's gone, you went to the altar, you cried, but it's still deep in your background. And you need to shut that off uh, like the lady did for my computer so that um, he, God could fix the problem. Because God cannot fix something that is still a negative tape that is running in the background that is minimized but it's still running and causing havoc and a lot of things are not fully working in your life because things are running in the background messing messing up with your life like it was with my computer so she turned off uh, what was running in the background and then she was able to reverse the update and when she was able to reverse the update it it came back but but the funny thing was is after she after she uh, turned it off, and stopped it from running totally um, the after she did that and got the computer she had to go deep into the settings and reverse the update and she said you can reverse an update up to 10 days and um, so she reversed the update and when she was reversing when she put the thing on to reverse the update she said it'll take a, a, at least 30 minutes um, to, to reverse and work I said are you staying on the line she said Unfortunately, no, because it'll take a long time. Sometimes, um, false updates only take a minute. A minute, because that update took, took me 10 minutes and destroyed my whole computer. And that, that reverse took about, uh, I think about 15, I think about 10 to 15. I think about 15 to 20 minutes, I think about a good 15 minutes at least to get back to its original state. Sometimes we want things quickly and the Lord's saying uh, the update took no time at all but to get back to your original state or better to get where he wants you to be, it's going to take a process. And it's going to require time. So it's like me waiting for, for the computer to get back to its original state. And I had to wait. I had to leave the computer on and I had to wait for... Uh, 15 or 20 minutes until the update uh, came back so sometimes we don't want to wait we want things to happen now but the Lord says it's not going to happen now let me take my time let me take you through the process because the process will perfect you He's saying, yes, I heard you, God. Some of you guys want to want to speed, uh, want to really get back to where you were or get to where God wants you to be quick. But he's saying the process will take time, but it will be better than you, you have ever dreamed it will be better than it was before. And he will not only reverse 
your false update, but he will make it better. But you have to uh, follow the process and you have to wait the time to let it settle, let it do its thing. I had to uh, let the computer w uh, do its thing. I couldn't even touch the computer while it was reverting back to where it was. And sometimes we want to fool with it, with, with, with what God is doing before he's done doing it. We either want to rush through it or make it go faster or fool or, um, or fool with it. He's saying you can't fool with it because if you fool with it, you'll maybe make it worse. Could you imagine if I turned off my computer or pre started pressing buttons in the middle of it? It could have messed everything up and that would have been a bigger problem. So let God take his time to do what he's going to do. Beloved, I know it's hard, but he knows what he's doing with you. He knows the purpose he, ha he has for you. He says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But that hope and that future often takes a process. And you need to understand and respect the process. Believe me, don't rush. Don't rush because if you rush, you won't get all of what God has planned for you. But if you let him, t let him take his, t his time with your life, it will be more than you can ever imagine. So, back to my story. Uh, so, the update was okay. Okay, so I waited for the re, um, for the revert to what it was before. Um, I waited for the update to be removed. And when it was removed, it was okay, and I was so relieved to have it back. But it, but you think that's the end of the story. You're like, oh, she got her update back. No, she got her computer back. Uh, Zoom text started working. Everything's okay. And it did. But what happened was very interesting. When this... This... I did my banking, I did some personal stuff, I did whatever, um, and it was a, was the right size and everything. And then this evening, I noticed something that, that the same update was still there. I was scared, so I called them back. And this time, it was a gentleman. And the gentleman said, oh yes, there is an update here. Uh, so he dismantled the update. But one thing I found interesting, although he dismantled the update and it wouldn't automatically update, um, the 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 false update is still there it didn't it didn't go away it won't automatically do it but if i click the wrong but okay if i click the wrong button it will do it again um so on my computer there's when i go to the power menu there's sleep there is shutdown, there is restart, and there is restart and update. Now, if I click restart and update, it will go back to the same thing again. 
So it won't do it automatically because he disabled it, but it's still available and I still have to be careful that I don't click that restart and update button because the same thing will happen again if I do that. And I said all that to, to say sometimes with false updates the update may go or you may progress in your life or, or you may get things back to quote unquote normal but it the update or the remnants of the update will not go and if you and if you um, are not careful or if you click the wrong button it will happen again so the Lord is saying although I'm releasing you to another place of destiny to another place in me and and roll and rolling back the false update to to something beyond your wildest dreams that other update will will still be there it will be something that you'll have to fight through your whole entire life and I'm not saying that doesn't say that you can't be free you can be free and freedom is possible but sometimes um, just because of the Lord wants you to depend on him he he will still leave uh, the remnants of that update there and if you get into the wrong circumstances or if you click restart and update it'll happen again so he's saying although I'm releasing you into a new um, a new realm of glory be careful because that update is still there and don't get too proud because the moment you get too proud is the moment you fall I was watching, I've been watching, uh, lately, I've been watching the, uh, Demi Lovato, um, YouTube documentary about what happened to her. And she said, I was sober for six years. She was like, um, the first time I got sober, I was in my teens and I was sober for six years. She's like, um, I thought I could handle it. So, but the moment I thought I could handle it was the moment that I, I got bored and weak and I was so unhappy. So I reverted back to what was comfortable. And it landed me into more serious trouble than I was six years ago. So I, she's like, I was snorting coke and, and Xanax, snorting coke and taking Xanax, but, but now I was snorting heroin laced with and laced with fentanyl so basically when you and somebody was saying in the video when you relapse from an addiction uh, the relapse is worse than the addiction was and there's a scripture in Ezekiel where it talks about demonic activity and how the the demons came back seven times harder than, than they were when they left. She, he's like, be careful that you don't get too cocky, that you don't get too 
I've got this because the moment you're not careful and the moment you say you got this, it'll come back harder and harder than it was when you left it. So if I'm not careful every day by looking what I'm clicking on, I may um, cl click one day on that update and restart thing and I may and I may be back to where I was before. Now because I'm aware of that, I know to look and be diligent about uh, what I'm clicking on um, and to click on the right thing so he's like be dil um, God said be diligent be aware be soberly minded he said too many people are sleeping and that's why are spiritually sleeping and that's why we're having so many issues with addiction so many issues with um, people breaking up so many people so many issues with different things that's because we are sleeping and he's caught and he and God is telling me so clearly If you don't wake up, it will kill you. And the Lord says, I have come that you may have life. He wishes life for you, not death. He wants you to wake up and have more abundant life than you can ever dream. But you need to be diligent and soberly minded about what you let into your mind, about uh, about where you're clicking and where you're stepping and what you're watching on social media and what you're ingesting and protect your heart. I was watching a ser sermon by Pastor Stephen Furtick this week, it, it was called Protect the Vessel. And he was talking about protecting what you put in your mind uh, with social media. But I'm saying not only with social media, but, but protect even what the, uh, what, what people you hang around with in this season protect your heart in all ways. I'm not saying to build walls around your heart so that people can't get in. People can't love you. People can't um, enjoy you. People can't get to know you because you're afraid of getting hurt. I'm saying to, to realize that you're precious and you're not a garbage can so so people don't have the right to put everything and say everything um, around you because you're not a disposal a, 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 a garbage can you are something precious and that something that's precious needs to be needs to be guarded now I was talking to God about this in the other day you need to guard your heart but you don't need to put up walls around your heart there are two kinds of people people that put up walls around their heart that you can't get in at all like it's an impenetrable fortress and people that guard their heart, people that are careful who they let in or what they let into their heart because they know what they let in and who they let in. They know that they are precious and they know that what they let in is precious. And for those of you who have built walls around your heart, let God show you 
how to take down those walls. Let God show you how to take down those walls, but still be disciplined. Because you need to let somebody in. You need to give so give somebody a chance to love you. Give somebody a chance to shower his grace upon you. Because there are people out there that need what you have. But you're, you're too scared of getting hurt. And you won't let people get close to you. But God will use those people to bless you. Don't be afraid. Be mindful, but not afraid. And ask the Lord, is this person a person that you've sent to me to help me? Or a person that the devil has sent to me to destroy me? And, um, the, and the other kind of person is a person that has no boundaries at all. They let everybody in and everybody has a say in their life and they have no filter, no boundaries. They, they want to be anybody's friend and that is also dangerous because you get so many opinions, so many things, and so many um, people saying certain things that you don't know what to, what to do. For those people, you need to slow down and ask the Lord, who, who do you keep in your life and who do you let go of? I'm not saying cancel. I'm not into counts, cancel culture like you just dispose of people like they're nothing. But you have to have um, little, you have to have, um, you need to separate the people in your life. What I would suggest, I wouldn't say you need, um, what I would suggest you do, what I have done, is separate the people in your life to um, multitude people, to disciples, and to the three. The multitude people are the big group of people, all your Facebook friends. They know you, but not closely. The, and they're a big group, they're your acquaintances at work, they're people you meet on the street or whatever. Those are the multitude. Um, the disciples are the 12 close friends that you have or your closer group of friends. They're not the multitude, but they're closer. They're closer than the multitude. Um, they're friends that you discuss things with. And they're friends that you talk to but not deeply. Uh, they're, they're friends that you would tell about your kids and whatever. The multitude you wouldn't really talk to about your your personal life. They're just people you know or people you've heard of. Uh, the disciple kind of friends are people that are closer to you, but not intimate with you. Like, they're close to you, but you don't let them see into you. And then and there are the three friends. Um, Jesus had Peter, James, and John. And these are the intimate friends. And this group ought to be very small, very small, uh, the group that you let see into you, the group that know you intimately, the, um, the group of friends that you can really get down and dirty with if you're, if you're going through something, you can really talk to them. And this is the smallest group. This should be the smallest group. Your multitude 
shouldn't be the smallest group and your Peter and your uh and your Peter James and John group be like big. Uh it, it should be the people that know you intimately should be very small. Um should be very select. Be very selective about the people you let into your life because you're so precious. You're so precious. And the more people you let into your life is the more opinions and and the more um and the more of their lives that they they have to share they share with you. So keep your intimate circle small. I'm not saying that you can't be nice to everybody. I'm not saying that you have to be awful to everybody. I'm saying you have to keep, you should, I, from my experience, it's best to keep your intimate circle, your, your uh, Peter, James, and John circle, small because the the more intimate you are with somebody is the more that they can hurt you and sometimes people get intimate with the right with the wrong person and when I say intimate I don't mean sexual sexual and intimate are two different things Sexual is physical and it's spiritual and emotional. But intimate can be, uh, it's a spiritual and emotional connection. It's somebody that knows you inside and out and that's, and, and that loves you unconditionally. And let me say this one thing. Um, it takes time to build intimacy. So if you are just um, just getting with a friend and you're like, oh, they're an intimate friend, I'll tell them my whole life, life story and I just met them a month ago. No, intimacy takes time. And Intimacy in friendship, intimacy in a marriage, intimacy in any relationship, even intimacy with family takes time. You might grow up with them but not be intimate with them. You might know them but not be um, intimate with them. May not may not let them see into you. Just because you know somebody or you grow up with somebody doesn't mean that you're intimate with them. Doesn't mean you let them see into you. Doesn't mean you let them see all your secrets and insecurities. Um, it takes time to build and form intimacy. And again, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about the knowing of a person intimately. Like, knowing the ins and outs of a person as much as you can. You never can know all of a person because people are uh, complicated. But as much as you can, it takes time to build that intimacy. And what, once you do, it's valuable. When somebody lets you into their lives, to their life, to their life, it's a sacred trust. And keep that sacred trust. Guard it with all you have. Because once that sacred trust is broken, it takes a long time to to build it back. It can be broken in a second, and it can, can take a lifetime. What can be broken in a second? What is broken in a second? Could take a life. T- okay. What is broken in a second will take a lifetime to build back. So be careful when somebody 
gives you the chance to know them intimately. Take them, take it as a sacred trust. Thank you, Lord, today for your word. Thank you, Lord, today for um, what you've said to us. Thank you, Lord, today for ministering, for ministering to us in such a wonderful way. We we bless you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. Take care. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believeth and everyone that receiveth he shall have everlasting life. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the Power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believeth and everyone that receiveth, he We are not ashamed, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it has ever if there is anyone today who wants to receive Jesus, all they need to do is ask for, for him. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess in your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. So that's all you need to do is confess and believe. And a lot of preachers say this, uh, say a prayer and the sinner's prayer. I don't do that because I believe uh, that God wants to hear your words. However you um, believe in it and confess, that is your uh, personal relationship with God. He is dying to have a relationship with you. Stop running from him. The only place he wants you to run it's into his arms. He's knocking on the door of your heart right now. So just receive it. And you don't have to say anything pretty. You don't have to you don't have to say anything magical. But just pour out your heart to the Lord and just say and just Say that you want him in your life. He's just waiting to hear from you right now. That is for somebody. Bye, guys. See you later. Don't forget. Don't forget if you want to share in com. If you want to share this with a friend or someone else. Feel free. If you want to comment, 
feel free I, I do this to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ I do this because I'm called to do this and my main goal is always to build his kingdom so if you hear something and you think that oh that might be good for a friend just send them a message or or put it on their wall with a loving message or ask them if you can put it on their wall first and then put it on their wall with a loving message um and together i'm believing we can see the whole of facebook saved in jesus name thank you guys